Was there, was there, was there, was empires in Africa called Kush Timbuktu, where every race came to get books With my success to you, even if you wish me the opposite Sooner or later, we'll all see who the prophet is So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Mark Simpson, and I am Director of Operations at Black History Studies. The lovely lady outside is my wife, Charmaine Simpson. She is CEO of Black History Studies, and we thank you for coming out, and we welcome you here today. Right, before we start, there is a few rules and regulations. First rule is nobody is allowed to take this event with their tablets or anything like that. It's against the rules and the Maya Angelou Foundation will come down on us hard. And we don't want that to happen because then we won't be doing more things like this. Is that right, family? Yes. All right, the second thing is, you guys can take pictures and tweet and say, wow, we're at this fabulous event at Black History Studies and the guy, the guy that's hosting, his belly's a bit big, but he's fantastic. <laughs> All of that, we don't mind that, that's fantastic. The third rule is, we always have a family environment. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, we always meet and greet. So we want everybody here to look beside, to look at the person beside you, in front of you, and behind you, and just say hello. hello. <laughs> <laughs> greetings, greetings. <laughs> Is everybody all right? Yeah. Okay. Now, the last thing I need to point out is when you sat down, you saw one of these, right? If you haven't got a pen, come to us, we will supply you with a pen. But it is very important that you fill out this and at the back where it says any other uh, comments, just say the guy that was hosting it was really, really nice, he's really good, his belly's a bit big, but he's fine, and, you understand? No, the main reason for filling out this is, if we get, family, 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 one voice please, thank you. If we get enough of these, um, sent back to Film London, who has sponsored us for this uh, film festival, then Film London, what they will do is, next time, they'll give us a bigger budget, and we can have it in the O2. And then we don't have to squeeze up in St. Anne's, as much as we love St. Anne's, and we give a lot of respect and love to Sister Dawn. Give Sister Dawn a round of applause, please. has been supporting Black History Studies from for, for neons now and, and we give lots of love and respect to her because if it wasn't for her, a lot of the things wouldn't happen. Now, I'm not going to ramble on, I'm going to call out my beautiful sister who has come here to perform for you guys today, right? Um, she is, I, I'm not even going to talk about her, I'm going to let you guys see her for yourself. Can you stamp your feet, clap your hands and make some noise for one Sakara? But always know that if you listen to your true self, your higher self, your innermost self, your goddess-like self, well, my sister, know that if you do this, deep in your heart, know that everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. No woman, no cry. Ooh, no woman, no cry. Hey, little sister, don't shed no tears. 
Greetings in the mass to I'm Dom Mutavan and we are here with GKTV, the UK's number one conscious platform where we are at the Black History Studies uh, free showing of When a Cur Cage Bird Sings. This is the Maya Angelou Film Festival which is showing a plethora of films concerning the works of the late great Maya Angelou. Like I said today was a free screening of When the Cage Bird Sings sings and I just want you to follow me uh, with my cameraman Dre and we're going to take a look in the uh, main auditorium where the movie has just finished hopefully we'll get a few um, recommendations on what we've just seen as you can see it's absolutely a full house a packed house tonight here at the St Anne's library over in North London Tottenham So as you can see, it was a really packed house over here at the uh, St. Anne's Library where there was a free film showing of Maya Angelou's excellent When the Cage Bird Sing, based and adapted on her early life and the traumatic experiences that she went through. Hopefully we can get a few testimonies from a few people who want to tell us well, exactly tonight, what they Thank thought. you very much. Uh, yeah. Really interesting, very inspiring. We'll be coming back again. What's your I name? haven't Suze. Sue? Suze Belvedere Abbott. Yeah. yeah. It's my husband and Giles. How are you doing, Giles? Nice to meet you as well. Nice to meet you. All right. And uh, do you think the movie did the uh, book justice? Yes. I haven't read the book. I know it. Have we? Yeah, we listened to it on R and I B. Went oh, after my eyes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then I have. Yes. Stunning. It's yes. really stunning. Yeah. I wanted to see the film a long time ago, but I never got round to it. So it's great. But we saw it tonight. Yeah. And you be coming back for the rest of the uh, showings? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, because yeah, it's not an area that is on Netflix or anything like that. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you very much for stopping and talking with got Christy. Thank you very much. Thank you. What's your name, my dear? My name is Celia. How are you doing, Celia? I'm doing well, thank you. How did you enjoy uh, when, uh, was it Cage Bird Sings? Yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Um, I've read the book, so I've never seen the film. Didn't know there was a film, so this is a great opportunity to see that. It was a bit emotional, I've probably got red eyes. Um, no, you haven't, but uh, do you think the film did the book justice? Yeah, definitely. Um, and obviously having Maya Angelou involved with the film, as it really shows. Yeah? Yeah. And um, she went through quite a few traumatic things in her early life, as it says, uh, made you, um, as you said, I should say, made you... Um, a bit emotional. Um, Obviously, the rape, and um, which made her lose her speech, and also I found it quite traumatic, the lots of movement that she had in her life, going from her grandmother to her mother and back again. I've got small children, and you want stability for them, and seeing that sort of instability in her early life is quite moving. Yeah. Will you be coming back to see any more of the screenings? I will, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Thank you very much for stopping the talk here. Really appreciate it. Fantastic event. It is so good to see something positive when there's so much negativity in the media and everywhere about black people it's just so really really good to see something positive that so we, we are able to do things and we need to let the youngsters know this thank you so much i really enjoyed it big up all right take care thank you let us know what you thought um, I thought it was amazing. I love her work anyway, and um, that's, it's good to support Black History Studies. It's always really, really trusting. As soon as you see the name, you go, yeah, you know, it's going to be well organised. Um, yeah, it's always great. It was, it's good. I came to the Marcus Garvey um, day, which was really, really good. And I've seen the film before, but I just wanted to come and be part of the community. So it was great to come and support and just be part of what's going on. So the film great. do the book justice. Um, it's always different, isn't it? I just love the way that she writes, it's always different. I think it's, they're just good in their own right. So, yeah. Yeah, I, just, I like them for different reasons. I thought the little girl was really good, you know, but also I love the way, you know, my gets it down on paper. So it's just, can't really compare the two, in my eyes, anyway. Thank you for talking to us. You're Your welcome. Name? June. Thank you, June. Appreciate it.
Coming to a close of an excellent evening's entertainment over here in North London at the St Anne's Library. We have been uh, witnessing the uh, life and works of Mayor Angelou, brought forth by Black History Studies. I'd like to uh, welcome a superb husband and wife team. I'd like to uh, say greetings, namaste to uh, Mark. How you doing? I'm a good brother, thank Finally, you. Finally, we've got you on film. We're always getting your lovely wife on film, and you always seem to disappear, bro. I'm always in the background doing the works, man. You know that when, when the works is on, you can never sleep. So Tell me about it. I know exactly what you're talking about. So uh, how did you find the uh, film showing today? It was absolutely fantastic. Um, I have to say that um, I was overwhelmed with the, the, the amount of people that was here, and some people had to turn back and go away because there was standing room only, and some people couldn't stand. So, yeah. Um, people represented and came out today, it was fantastic. We could have had twice the amount of people in here, the amount of people that came, so I'm, I'm, I'm chuffed, as they would say. And Charmaine, um, how are you feeling after uh, pulling it off, you know? Oh, I'm, I'm just speechless. The amount, when we came, the queue was going outside the door and it's just been beautiful. The fact that oh, everybody came out to honour the life and legacy of Dr. Maya Angelou as well. And it's just brilliant that people came out and supported. So give, give us a little insight into the, uh, what the festival is all about and uh, how long it's running. Okay, um, the Maya Angelou Film Festival is an event basically highlighting the film legacy of Dr. Maya Angelou. Everybody knows about her poems and her books, but no, doesn't know how she contributed to film. So what I uh, put together is a programme of films that she's either written, um, directed or taken part in or has some link to um, within the film festival. It's going to be run over uh, three weekends um, starting the last event we're going to have at the Ritzy, upstairs at the Ritzy um, in about three weeks time and it's just been beautiful. So people come down, go to blackishystudies.com, you'll find out all the information about the film festival there. And uh, the the, the film festival is also going to be looking at uh, women in film, uh, not just in acting, because we often see hear about female actors, but we don't necessarily hear about the directors and producers. You're going to be highlighting and showcasing them as the screenwriters. And yeah, we're going to be um, highlighting black, especially using this whole film festival to highlight black female um, directors, screenplays, writers, producers. Um, inspiration women that have actually in the f industry and giving inspiration to other f upcoming filmmakers as well because we need to, we need more people telling our story we can't be waiting for anybody else to do it we need to start thinking about how are we going to share our story out there through creative means and film is a, a moving image is very powerful and it's a very powerful way of getting that message across so I'm trying to encourage everybody else to start making films and uh, telling their stories getting into the film industry especially in this country and if you don't want to get involved in the film industry in this country go abroad Nigeria um, South Africa all these different places we should be going well said well said and you said doing the works marks what you got planned next working wise um, Monday uh, no Monday we have black and Cuba screening of black and Cuba at the PCS learning center that's this Monday so by the time you guys see this that might have gone but it's all good we're gonna do it again we have black Paris tour coming up at the beginning of October and then I'm off to Kemet again with a group of people to do another 10-day tour and then I'm back for black history month oh 1st of October I'm doing a presentation, it's here isn't it? Right here, uh, Africa before the slave trade. Just to highlight our history before the slave trade. Because people, even uh, yesterday I was at a hospital speaking to one of the consultants there and she believed that our history started with slavery and I told her no, it ended with slavery. So this is what we're going to be dealing with in that presentation and letting people, a lot of people know what was going on in Africa before the invasions and the kidnappings, etc. And the Kemet tour, when's it taking place? The Kemet tour starts uh, 23rd of October. Uh, yeah, 28th here, 23rd of October and uh, it's 10 days and we get back on the 2nd of November. Places are still available but you have to get in contact with us fast. Alright, and, yeah, and if the, the, we're doing it again in May, so yeah, we do it twice a year. About, about, about the May one, if they in, can't make the uh, end of October, November one. Right, so just, just visit blackhistorystudies.com and go onto our uh, page, you will see services, click on services, you'll see tours, go in there or send us an email and we'll send you the information as soon as it's, uh, the information for May is coming out this week anyway, so yeah. It I've should. already hinted to Charmaine, so I'm going to hint to you as well, we want to come with you, you know. We yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, don't worry, within the next yeah, 18 so. months I'm going to sort that out, yeah. right, I'm going to sort that out, yeah, trust me.
because we'll be very keen and we can kick some information. Yeah, and, 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 and you guys with the camera and everything, yeah, we can yeah. do it our style. Yes, yeah. yes. I'm, look, I'm actually looking forward to joining you guys. Yeah, man, definitely, 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 definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations on the new book. I know your family is growing. Yes. This man is eating more than the food. <laughs> As she says, you know, it's, but big up this this crew here because really and truly a beautiful husband and wife team, beautiful business. This is the way that we have to go and the way that we should be rolling. Yeah, as a family unit. Yeah, Black History Studies. You've heard some testimonies. You will hear some testimonies from people whenever they see this symbol, this emblem that you're seeing on this. Um, Black Brothers chest here, they know that it's the real McCoy. That's how we need to get our business as a deep rep. That's what they've been telling me, yeah? So. Oh, we're just picking up the symbol here. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to working with them further. Yeah, make sure you do check out Mayor Angelou's life work via film across the month of September. Charmaine Simpson, Mark Simpson, it's been a pleasure. Keep doing what you're doing, keep growing, yeah. Keep adding to the family. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, all good, brother. GK TV will be here to support. Hopefully, you'll be there to support. Let's keep this black group economics moving, keep it growing and keep it working. All right. From all of us here at GK TV, the UK's number one conscious platform, we thank Mark and Charmaine for inviting us. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for being nice here. Nice to talk to you as well, big man. Yeah, you too, Namaste, Abba, yeah. to Divine. All right. Keep it where you got it. It's still a motive and we are GKTV, the UK's number one conscious platform. It has become and the happy memories is what I choose to focus on. So that's why I look so young and sexy and sweet. <laughs> yeah. And I go to have, have my home phone, my children give me my high phone, and I go on my phone, Facebook. And book face. And then something, 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 snap your snap up. Snap your shot, that's it, snap shot. Ready? Ready? Oh, Snapchat! Oh, yeah, but other ones, everything too fast. <laughs> this generation, everything is so fast. With grandma to come to show me something and then two tools just it gone. She said, it's just that chat. We said, oh, but technology is moving on. But we need to keep things going and we need to keep the love going. I don't know if there's anything else that I've missed that I wanted to share with you, but these are all my, this is Hubert, yes. Hubert is still alive and well. I asked him to come here to the light. I can call it, I call it light, but no. Did you know it rude when I call it light to me? Who agreed when I said light to me? No, no, no. I'm not embarrassed, and I can't say it. You see, you know, you know, start the speak the truth and shame the devil, you know. Honestly, speak the truth, because you feel better when you speak the truth. It is, was, I call a lie to me. Up to this day, and I will still think it lied to me. Yeah? Even though there's books on the shelf now, there wasn't. So it's a lie to me.
I thought the, the event was really good. I definitely recommend it. Um, it was nice to sit down and discuss the topics with everyone. Um, the film in particular was a great film. So that was nice. Yeah, no, it was a really positive experience and like I definitely recommend the film. Go see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought the movie was absolutely fantastic. I'm a fan of Maya Angelou and I, I didn't even know that she even directed a film. So the fact that she directed something like this is absolute fantastic. Yeah, it was a very good film. I like the idea, well, not even so much an idea, but the fact that it had a very good ending, a very positive ending, very inspiring ending. And I think it would be something that would be good to put into schools because it's, you know, it's one of those kind of easy films that you can watch and it has a history to it and it has, you know, what I call a good storytelling theme. I think children will enjoy that and they'll understand it. It's good. I really enjoyed it. All right, so I thought Down in the Delta was a really touching film. Um, what it touched on for me was the whole family unit thing. Um, the, the image I liked was the what the uncle did where he portrayed a positive black image, a positive black man looking after his wife and the whole black economical part was really good and that's a part people might not even notice because I didn't even really check it in the beginning but then what I realised when um, I'm not even sure who Wesley Snipes actually played the son um, I think it was Will when he was actually talking and he was like yeah I want to bring back to the community make sure everyone's getting a job so he wanted to just support everybody and it just reminded me of things like Black Wall Street so I definitely recommend this film for anyone Down in the Delta is an exquisite film powerful very captivating I was privileged to be here to see this film today I have to say Got Kush Television you're doing a fantastic job documenting speeches, testimonials, it's exquisite. And there's one thing I've taken out of the actual film. There's a strong message of family and also to be able to organize and centralize. It's funny that we're actually on St. Anne's Road. St. Anne's, that's the actual parish of which Marcus Garvey came from. You know, it's, it's powerful. We'll have to say people, Become a part of it, blackhistorystudies.com, check out Got Kush Television and I'm just one person here just passing through and I'll tell you what, I'm going to come to many, many more. You're doing great things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Some drawers this morning, that's why we're starting a bit later, but it's been good. So, greetings, everyone! Greetings. That's better, that's better. I'm loving the fact that there's lots of sisters in the room. Just look around here, just look around, just look around. Plenty of sisters in the room, that's all good. So, welcome! My name is Charmaine Simpson, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Black Issue Studies, and I welcome you here today. Thank you for coming out and supporting the Maya Angelou Film Festival. Uh, before we start, we like to have a family environment because we are sisters here and we're trying to increase sisterhood in the community. So if you can turn to the person behind you, behind in front of you, beside you and greet them and say hello and we'll get started. I know I'm not a sister. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. So we are going to be here till about five o'clock, so it's good that we you know show our teeth and smile with everybody in the room because what this event is trying to do with this event is get people networking, talking to each other. Hopefully films get made and contacts that get made through this event today and everything else. So before we start, just gonna run through the order of the day. So what we're gonna have first, we're gonna have a presentation about breaking into the film fest um, industry and also looking at the history of black women in moving image. And that's gonna be delivered by my super sister, former chair of the New Black Film Collective, Miss Yvonne Kunhi at the back there. Give a round of applause. Then we're gonna take a short break.
short break so everybody can get a refreshment, shake your foot. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna show the film Sisters in Cinema, and then I've got a super lineup um, of powerful sisters that are in the community that have actually made films in, are also in the film industry. We're gonna come up, we're gonna have a panel discussion as well. We're gonna keep it informal. So, enough of me talking. I'd like to invite Yvonne to the stage, and we'll deliver the presentation. Big round of applause, please. So I chose two filmmakers that were very active during the 1980s and they are Maureen Blackwood whose picture you can see there and Sister Dee Almina Davis whose picture you can't see because I didn't have enough success in actually getting a picture of her and unfortunately she's passed um, quite some time ago now at least 15 years ago and um, but even uh, though she has passed she has done some remarkable work and notable work and it was really important for me to um, uh, really flag up these two filmmakers because they're not active at the moment and it's very easy for their work to kind of disappear into the oblivion and, and no one will know about them and no one will talk about them so I'm excited to talk about them today. Does that we have, which we have developed over the past eight years, want to see films and um, content, different content about their lives. So we showed a film last Monday called Black and Cuba, and we had a diverse crowd. We had about 90 people there on a Monday and it rained. And I was like, Mark, oh my gosh, look at the people coming. I was like, wow, look at this. And people said, oh, I love this film. And then we had the discussion afterwards. We had people from Palestine talking about their struggle and they could relate to what they saw in the film. And I thought, you know what? This is why I do the work we do. This is why we have to do the work that we do, because we are all looking for different stories. I'm just so happy that I, I can reach out to Sister Yvonne and say, you know what, do this presentation, because I, for me, that's done a whole heap of research in terms of black history in this country. I have never heard of the two sisters that you've mentioned, and I've supported numerous films over the years. So I just have to give thanks to you for doing that presentation as well. I'd like to give thanks to everybody in the room as well. Good afternoon, ladies and gents. It's an absolute pleasure and an <laughs> honour to be here amongst my sisters. Um, I am Paulette Harris German, aka Lady Paulette, because I wear a number of hats. But today I'm here in a film capacity. Uh, Hi, I'm Samantha Esamadu. Um, I'm a filmmaker. Um, I run an organisation also called Media Diversified, known as Writers of Colour on Twitter. We're quite noisy, yes. you might have seen us here on Twitter. Um, I'm very thankful for being invited for to be here. Uh, my name is Atosha Hilton and I started as an actress. Um, I went to drama school, came, uh, went to drama school in New York, came back to London and um, was doing what most actors do, um, applying to, um, to be in short films, doing a lot of theatre. Hello everyone, um, my name is Yvonne McConaughey and I'm a film practitioner really, I've never really called myself a filmmaker because I was always doing one thing and then ending up doing something completely different. So I first started wanting to make film, I started a long time ago in the 80s.
and Paulette Coletti and um, this event was just so informative and uh, it was a chance to network and meet other filmmakers. I was just so impressed with the film we watched, Sisters in Cinema, learned so much more about what other women filmmakers are out there. I agree. My name is Cora Burke and um, yeah, my experience today was very eye-opening to know that there are actually a lot of films out there that tell our story as black women. I was kind of disillusioned thinking that, you know, the only things to see out there are the typical, stereotypical movies, but it was just so nice to see that there are movies being made about our story and meeting people that are actually doing these things present day is just phenomenal. So it was a fabulous experience, learned a lot, felt the vibe, felt a lot of um, a sense of community. So it was brilliant. Very, very good. Um, yeah, I thought it was amazing. I mean, the people that are here and the experiences that they have and also what knowledge they have to pass on, I think it's something that, that needs to be, be told in more areas and more venues and in, in a wider space to a bigger audience. I think it's, it's an amazing thing. Hi, my name is Clarissa. I found it a great day, really educational. Learned a lot about filmmaking that I didn't know. I'm personally not a filmmaker, but I actually got some great connections. Places that I want to go and check out. I've got a whole list of sites now that I'm going to bombard people with and apps. And I think it's really important for young people just to explore and learn from the elders about the filmmaking that we obviously need to carry on and support. Hi, my name is Jenna Kiru. I'm a director and I'm at the Maya Angelou Film Festival today in London. It's been an amazing day of workshops um, and film screenings for artists and filmmakers um, that are not normally seen in the mainstream. Um, so events like this are super important because they're the only opportunity to see um, filmmakers and artists um, from the community um, and from filmmaking. So I'll encourage more people to support um, activities and events like this. Absolutely fantastic event, it was superb. It's always good to know yourself and this was an opportunity for us to start today to look at what we have contributed and yes, we can. Thank you. 
I really can't recommend this event enough actually. Um, what a wonderful way to have a lazy Saturday afternoon. I've been working all week. I don't want, really want to be exerted. I don't really want to go shopping, but I want to do something. I want to be stimulated. And all I had to do was sit down. I learned how to tell some stories. I learned, uh, I got to know so, so many new people and just a positive vibe where everybody is coming together to just learn and be better than they were yesterday. And what I really, really appreciated was that um, how uh, interracial it was. We had, it wasn't just black people, we had a number of white people, white couples um, coming in to also want to know more because black history is not just for black people. Yeah, and that's what I found very, very um, stimulating. So wonderful Saturday afternoon, but not publicized well enough. I only learned by accident, but I'm here and that's good enough. Thank you so much. It was brilliant. It was just fantastic. Yeah. Well organized. Um, I don't I was just amazed the whole time around. Yeah, I learned a lot. Um, it was very informative because um, I don't really know much about Zora Neale Hurston um, and it was very emotional and the panel at the end was like really great. It's really uplifting. Yeah, I appreciated it as well. It was my first event coming here and I wanted to be in a space like this, especially as someone that's not from this country. So it was great to be here. I got the email from Black History um, studies and about Zora so I then went on the internet so this was a day ago went on the internet and discovered um, a bit about her and I was so impressed that I realized I decided that I needed to come tonight to see the um, documentary about her life she was a very inspirational woman uh, a free spirit like a lot of people have said and definitely worth and her books her books and she was a genius really a, a genius and considering um, she was writing during the 20s 1920s um, yeah it was really impressive yeah hi so my name is uh, Tina Lashmore and we are here at the Lear Library in St Anne's and uh, part of um, Black History Studies um, just watched a movie about um, a very good um, African-American woman and I'm not going to name her because I want people to go and see it for themselves. Um, great inspiration, um, alternative uh, narrative that she delivers, which is quite controversial for us, especially as a Brit, um, but highly recommended. Go see it. Thanks.